Hello there from Johor Bahru. That's right, I am back in Malaysia. I am back in Johor. Uh, after I left Medan and Toba, I came back here to Johor. Because, well, the first time I came to Johor, I ended up meeting a very nice and fun and beautiful girl. And so I came back here to, to spend a couple weeks with her. And uh, yeah, just hang out here in Johor spend time with her and then in a couple days I'm going back to the United States of America going back to Texas and so before I leave though I thought I'd make a uh, another video in Johor I actually filmed in Johor when I first came here right, right over there there's Singapore I came to Johor spent some time here and then from Johor I went to Malacca and somehow I managed to not transfer all the footage from my memory card to my hard drive. I got all the photos, but the videos were missing. And I was, and I was thinking, damn, <laughs> that sucks. But I knew I was coming back here so I could just kind of refilm a few things and yeah, just kind of reshoot it. So not a big deal. But yeah, right where I'm standing is the, uh, the link between Malaysia and Singapore. And this bridge right here, I was reading is the busiest border crossing in the world 350,000 people cross this bridge every single day making it the busiest in the world that is crazy and right over here where I came to film is the Marina Place RNF looks like they're building some huge apartments some huge condos there's an opera house right here. It's a pretty impressive place. There's museums and galleries. But what we're gonna do today, like I said, we're gonna explore Ja, ja <laughs> We're gonna explore Johor a little bit. There's a couple places I want to go check out. Uh, I want to show you some of the food that I've been eating here, some of the places I've been going, and yeah, we're gonna have a a Johor Jalan Jalan video. Let's do it. Let me show you the area I've been hanging out for the past couple weeks. Just about every day almost. So yeah, just like the sign says, the painting is kind of the historic district. Here you're gonna find a lot of old buildings. I mean, it's, hey, hey, I've been eating there. Uh, not too much Indian food. They got roti chennai, of course, so I've been hitting it up, it's good. But down here you have a, a nice diverse area. Johor, you have a lot of Chinese Malay, you have a lot of Indian Malay, and down in this area, you got a, a lot of good food, a lot of good food. Hello, just one today. Yeah. Oh. So this place, they're serving up some delicious nasi padang. Look at this. Look at all that delicious food. But that's actually not why I'm here. I am here because they serve up this dish here. It's called roti kaya. It's freaking delicious. So this is what I'm looking at here. It looks very basic and simple because, well, it is. Simply some toast, but what's on the inside is what's so good. They have this thing here called kaya, which is just coconut jam, but it's super sweet. And, you know, they put some margarine on here and... No, thank you. And it is delicious. No, thank you. The first time I tried it, it reminded me of cinnamon toast, something I grew up eating, which is basically just cinnamon, lots of sugar, and butter. Kind of has that same same taste, but I think this is actually a little better. 
But I'm actually eating it wrong. Let me show you how you eat it. So it actually comes with... It doesn't come with it, but you're supposed to order it with it. Two soft boiled eggs, half boiled eggs. Put some soy sauce in there. Mix it up a little bit. You get your toast, you dip it in there. And just like that. That is, uh, I guess, the Johor or Malaysian breakfast for you right here. Mm -hmm. Let me know, are you a fan of this? I think it's delicious. Mm. So when you're done with all this, you just drink it. Mm. Delicious. So this is closed, yeah? Yes. Ah, okay. So no, not open to public. No. Ah, okay, okay. You go to order outside. I'm sorry? Uh, Photos outside, okay? Okay, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> so, the next place I want to come show you is this massive building behind me. Huge structure. Looks like a castle. This is the Bangunan Sultan Ibrahim. Hope I'm saying that right. Here in Johor, they still have a sultan. And I'll go show you his palace in a second. It is massive. They are doing quite well for themselves. But this building has a really interesting story. Uh, it was built in like 1940. I believe it started in like 1936, finished in 1940. Uh, just in time for the Japanese to come here and take it over and control it. And they use this building. See up there at the top? Those open windows up there. From up there, you can, you know, you can see into Singapore. I don't know how easily, but maybe they have uh, binoculars and that kind of deal. But the military, they would use this building to uh, to spy on Singapore. Because when the Japanese, when they invaded Malaysia during the Second World War, they actually started on the northern tip of Malaysia. They started in Kota Baru, and they moved their way down. They finished here in uh, Johor. When Japan came here, they, let me just show you what I'm looking at here. You see this, the skyline over here, got a mosque right here. When Japan came here, you know, when they came to Indonesia, when they came to, when they invaded Malaysia, all the Asian countries, they basically said, hey, we're on your side, we're Asians. And so they were able to convince the Malaysians here too, or at least the people in power that you know, maybe we're here to liberate you and you're, we're going to be on your side. And well, the Sultan here at, the, at that time made friends with this Tokugawa guy like in 1921. Apparently they had uh, the same interest in hunting tigers and doing, you know, rich elite kind of sport, the only things that only rich people can do. And when the Japanese attacked, they asked Tokugawa, they said, hey, can you help us, uh, you know, foster relationships here in Johor? And that's exactly what they did. They were able to take over this building. They were able to uh, use the, the sultan, the palace, as their headquarters. And when it was all said and done, apparently the sultan, Sultan Ibrahim, he was exiled from Johor. He was taken out of the palace and he was uh, sent somewhere else and so uh, yeah that's more or less how the story goes they were friends with the Japanese they let them come in and the Japanese were like all right we got what we needed now you're out of here but it kind of made it to the other side of the building uh, looks like there might have been an old house here a residence I mean there's a lot of cool old buildings and structures here in Johor and we're gonna make our way and go check some of them out. Well, let's go up here real quick and we'll have a view of uh, the other side. Kind of unfortunate here though. You 
can't go inside this place. We'll check out the palace later. You can't go inside the palace either. Apparently the queen or the sultan or whoever's living there now has closed the palace off. And so when I first got to Johor, you see this huge, massive plot of land on Google Maps. It's all green and it's right over there. And I was thinking, wow, that's cool. Maybe there's a huge park over there, which essentially it is, but it's closed to the public. And they're living in some prime, prime real estate. Like it is beautiful over there. But I mean, that place just looks like a, a castle. They got some cannons over here. Again, there's, you know, just some uh, old structures and buildings over here. Maybe they were used for uh, living. I'm not really sure if anyone knows what some of these buildings are on the outside. Let me know because you can't go in and check them out yourself. Looks like there's some sort of play area for activities and sport maybe here. But I was reading up until 1971, this was the tallest building in Johor. The tallest, but I mean, now you look around, there's huge, huge apartment buildings and I wouldn't necessarily say skyscrapers, but you know, there's huge tall buildings now everywhere here in Johor. Oh, and here's another one of them signs. Beware of snipers. Oh my goodness. Whoo. So if I just drop, drop dead, you know what happened. check it out we have ourselves an old abandoned prison never been in one of these I've been in old abandoned hotels uh, I've been in old abandoned ski resorts pachinko parlors uh, souvenir shops never a prison so this should be interesting 1883 is what it says when it was when it was built I, uh, I, I've driven by this place just about every single day and I look in and the, the door is just like wide open. It's crazy. Pinjata, Malaysia, 1883, Johor, Baru. I, uh, I saw one video, it said this place opened in yeah, 1883, closed down in 2005. It was still used until like 2017, but it is in pretty bad shape, as you can see. The big steel doors here. I'm guessing these were just all offices. Maybe this is where all the inmates would come in and out of right here when they came. Wow. I mean, it kind of looks like a, a small city back here. I mean, there's just building, building, you know. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. There's a flooded room. More offices. My Malaysian isn't that great. Neither is my Indonesian, so I can't really make out any of the signs. You know, I'm not sure what this room would be. But, I mean, it just looks like it's been gutted out. Let's see if we can get up this way. So, 
that this was built in 1883. That's a long time ago. You know, we were just talking about how the Japanese came and they invaded uh, Malaysia. I can only assume they would use this prison to, to keep political prisoners, POWs, and who knows what kind of heinous and terrible things happened here. Huge, huge open building right here. Let's look at some of the pictures and the paintings on the wall. I'm not really sure what this says, but I'm guessing it's something has something to do with Islam, religion. You know, maybe this is where people, inmates, gathered and and had a church service, or not church service, but you know. They, uh, they would do prayer and that kind of deal. Kuala Lumpur, you got the two towers there. Well, that's an interesting cartoon. steel doors. Wow. Question for you guys. How many of you would like to wander through an old abandoned prison like this? Let me know in the comment section. Is this, is this your cup of tea or no? Or would you just rather watch me do it? found one of the cell blocks. Yep. Sure enough, this is uh, the prison. Wow. Let's see what a, a room look like. Not very big. No windows. Just this, just a hole basically in the wall. Uh, I guess you can go up three floors, three stories. I'm not going up there. <laughs> I think this is kind of all I want to see. Okay, yeah, there's a window up there, but not much. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty spooky. <laughs> that was pretty spooky. Okay, let's see what else is back here. Yeah, okay. These holding cells are a little bit bigger. A little more room to breathe, maybe. superior rooms, which makes you wonder, are there any people in here chilling? You know, this one would hold three beds, I guess. You, know, you wouldn't be isolated, you wouldn't be by yourself. Huge, again, just huge, massive steel doors and locks. They just left this. They didn't tear it down. I mean, and there were no like no trespassing signs. There was nothing. There wasn't taped off. I mean, the door just wide open. I guess if I guess they're thinking, if you're brave enough to come back here. Wow. More cells back here.
Interesting. No idea what this would be used for. Just has these huge columns in the middle. What the hell? The shower room? Toilets? Showers? Okay. Hmm. No telling. There's nothing left. There's, it's just gutted out, empty. Are there some more cells over here? I mean, these are just big old rooms. Maybe they would hold anywhere from 10 to 15 people in each one. Yeah, just big holding rooms. And it had to have been hot. I mean, I've just been walking around a little bit. I'm sweating. They ain't got no AC, that's for sure. Yeah, this looks like one, two, three, four, five, six. Six or seven huge rooms right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks like we made it to the, the back side of the prison. You can see the wall right here. A huge steel door. Where would this lead to? Kind of hard to tell. Everything has uh, been overtaken by nature. Everything is covered in shrubs and leaves and that kind of deal. Okay, maybe this area was for the officers, security, that kind of deal. This looks a little more proper. Let me know what that says. Those signs over there. Big empty room, toilet, another big gate over there, I'm guessing that's the back door, another big, uh, I don't know, maybe these are holding rooms, I'm not really sure, this goes all the way down, okay, I think we've seen enough, what do you think? Let's head, uh, let's head to the front, get a thumbnail, and uh, get on out of here. So spooky, so spooky. That's pretty good. Got some good artists over here. Kind of opens up here on the left over here. I'm not sure if there used to be a building here or what, but I'm still, as you can see, that's one of the cell blocks. I think you're dirty. Let's see. 
Anything back here? Maybe this was the yard. Maybe this is where they got to get out and move around and play and, and uh, just hang out. I mean, you could kind of see lions on the concrete. Maybe they could place some sort of sport or activity. Who knows? Pinjata, Malaysia. Pinjata, does that mean jail? From here, we're gonna go check out a huge abandoned mall that, for whatever reason, uh, is still sitting there. It's kind of a huge eyesore. Uh, it's right in front of the Sultan Palace, too. And I'll show you what the, the Sultan Palace looks like, too. It's pretty nice. Um, but right across the street from it, there's this huge, old, like, five, six story abandoned mall. And if I was as rich as the, the Sultan, I'd have it, I'd pay to get it torn down, I think. Damn, it just kind of keeps going, huh? This place is huge. And it was used as uh, recently as 2017, is what one of the videos said. Going all back here. Hmm. I'm sure some of these rooms were used as a kitchen and cafeteria and that kind of deal. hanging up. Maybe some people still live here. I don't know. Or like use it to uh, to sleep at night. There's an old whale. Hey, there's a bag with the, with the razor in it. I wouldn't be surprised if you know young people or just people who are homeless come here and live. I mean, that's kind of sad. I would, I hope they don't have to, but you never know. All right. Let's get on out of here. And, uh, yeah, I think there's a bunch of rats and that kind of stuff in here, too. Okay, that's gonna do it. I think they just came to take a picture. Hello? Huh? Can you speak Malu? No. Uh, Sadika, Sadika, Saga. You can speak some English? Yeah. Are you from Johor? I'm from Johor. Yeah? Have you been here before? Have you seen inside? I don't know. Did Dalam? Sudah pergi? Balloon? Uh, ah. 27. Ah, it closed. Oh, you explored? Yeah. Oh, uh, really? And then my night, friend night. Singapore. Ah. Night. Night? Yeah. 27. This one. Uh-huh. Uh, next week, lah, next week. Sunday. On Sunday? Uh, next week, lah, 27. Uh-huh. There's somebody in there. Oh, I don't know. Ah, uh, in Vietnam. Huh? There's somebody in there. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. You're ex explore. I explored inside, yes. One? One. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Come and take your pictures. Come and take your pictures. Yeah. Like I said, the door's open. Alright guys, thank you. Bye. The door is just open. And you from America. America. Yeah. You from Johor? Yeah. You're home, huh? <laughs> nice. So this is the uh, Sultan Palace? Sultan, yeah. It's big, right? This is the uh, land. 
They own this? Ah, they own this. It's a, it's oh, sure, absolutely.